Isn't that cool? I love that look as that callus builds up and all of those roots just grow and bust out at the seams. All right guys, so we are headed to the post office right now because after that rose video, I got a comment from a guy named Richard, and he mentioned a rose that his great-grandmother brought over here from Germany in 1880, and I got so excited just by the story he told about the rose and how it got here, and how he's had it in the family so long, I thought, man, it'd be cool to have some cuttings of that thing. So I mentioned that to him, and I'm supposed to go to the post office today and pick up those cuttings. Thank you, Richard. So we're gonna head over there now. I've got the little buddy with me. You in there, Allie? <laughs> so let's go get these cuttings and let's get them started, guys. All right, Allie, get in there. We're looking for a yellow slip. Ooh, or a key. Let's go pick up this package. What do you got there, Allie? The rose cuttings. The rose cuttings. Thank you, Richard. I'm excited to see what happens here. All right, Richard, so I got your cuttings home from the post office. I'm excited to see what we've got. I already pulled this part out because I saw your note. And let's go ahead and read that note to you guys real quick. It says, Hi Mike and Cade. Enclosed you will find some rose cuttings. These are the ones that I talked about on your YouTube channel. The Queen Elizabeth. I hope they do very well for you. If you know someone who knows roses, maybe they can take a look at them and see if they can confirm if they really are the Queen Elizabeth. Because that is what I was told many, many years ago. Thanks, Richard. Richard, I really appreciate you sending these cuttings. I think it's so fun when we can trade, you know, across the country. Let's go ahead and take these cuttings and let's get started on propagating them. I'm gonna try and run through this faster than that last rose video because you guys already got all the details on that, but we're gonna use the same propagation setup with the two liter bottle and we're gonna get these cuttings stuck. By the way, guys, if you're interested in that other rose video, then just click on the link up here or down below or wherever I put it, and you'll get all the information. It's a 28 minute video with all the details. All right, guys, so I got all the rose cuttings out here and I unwrapped them all, and there's quite a few. I think I've got like 10 of them right here. Some of them are a little bigger, some of them are a little smaller. I wanted to show you real quick first though, I got a ton of questions about what rooting hormone I use. And the rooting hormone that I typically use around here is Hormidin 3. I've got about three different varieties of rooting hormone for different types of plants, but this works really well for semi-hardwood and hardwood cuttings that are tougher to root. Typically, my rhododendrons, that's where I first got into the Hormidin 3, and it works well for so many plants. I'm using that now because that's what I have out here right now. Uh, you can use a weaker hormone for the roses, but it worked really well in the last video, so we're going to use this guy again. So I wanted to show you real quick, guys. When we're He sent these without leaves attached, and so what we're going to do is we're going to plant these the right direction, first of all. So the leaves grow out upward like this along the stem as you can see and so you always want to make sure that you're putting it in your medium the right direction this end goes down the leaves point up now he actually went ahead and cut these right below a leaf node i'm going to go and cut a little bit more material off just above his cut because i want nice good green material to stick down into that rooting hormone so the first thing i'm going to do is break off that bottom leaf and maybe, actually maybe uh, the next one as well. And any thorns that are along that area because it helps open up new areas for roots to grow if they want to grow out of those points. And the nodes are where the higher concentration of undifferentiated cells are that can then form roots. The next thing I'm gonna do is like I said, just snip right above his cut right below a leaf node. And actually, I wanna get a little bit at an angle there. And then, we're gonna dip this guy into rooting hormone. But first, I wanna do what I did with the figs, which is scar just in a straight line along the bottom portion of this rose cutting with the pruning shears. Cause that'll just kinda of open up that outer bark to the cambium layer and allow more roots to form. Then we'll dip this guy in our rooting hormone, get it part way up the cutting there, tap off the excess, and that's gonna go right in the pot. 
I'm going to repeat that with all the rest of these guys. We'll get them stuck in here. All right, guys, now that we've got all these guys stuck in here, and there were 10 of them, and we got all 10 of them to fit, so these guys are going to be jam-packed once they start rooting. But I'm going to take my same 2-liter bottle that we did with the last video, and we're just going to stick it right over the top there. And then that is it. Just kind of wedge it down there. We're leaving the top off of this thing. You can see that okay. Let me get a little closer. There we go. We're leaving the top off of it so it can vent warm air, but the humidity will still build up inside. I'm going to go set this aside right now, and we'll just forget about it for the next four to six weeks. All right, guys, there it is. Richard's cutting, sitting off with the other two rose cuttings that we just did, and those guys are doing well. They still got beautiful leaves on them, and these guys, I think, are going to do every bit as well, especially with that little two-liter bottle set up. We'll come back, and we'll check them out. All right, it's been exactly three weeks and there are Richard's roses. Aren't they looking good, guys? So, all the leaves were off of them when he sent them, but look, we've got new growth everywhere just starting to bust out from a bunch of these guys. And I don't wanna tear them up because it's only been three weeks. We want these guys to sit in here for like six solid weeks. We're getting later in the summer and there's plenty of warm weather, but we want these guys to really get rooted good in there before we do anything with them. All right, guys, this is it. We're here, we've arrived, it's next spring. So I wanna recap for just a moment because I need to for myself more than anything. So last summer, around late July, beginning of August, I received a bunch of cuttings from a guy named Richard and we stuck those cuttings, but they were a little bit different than the rose cuttings that we did in that first rose video, put a link down in the description below, in the sense that they didn't have any leaves on them, they were later in the season, so the wood was more firm and hardened off, and we had to treat them a little bit differently. So, if you guys remember, well, of course you remember, you're watching it, but I started out with those cuttings with the soda bottle on top of them in this hoop house, and then I flipped to a scene three weeks later where they were on the other side of my pole barn, and the reason for that, I, as I've been editing this, I realized, I didn't tell you guys why I did that, it started getting hot. It was like getting to the end of August and it gets really hot around that time frame and it was heating up in this hoop house. So I wanted to get them into the shade and get that bottle top off of them so that they didn't cook in there. I had every intention of showing you those cuttings after a few more weeks when we would have roots. but. Because we were later in the season, I think that's what took so long. They didn't root as fast as I thought they would. So, you know, as September came on, I just brought them into the hoop house here and I thought, we'll just leave them alone and see what happens in the spring. Well, this is what happened. Here are those same cuttings. We started with 10 original cuttings and now we have seven. Seven of them that rooted and grew on into beautiful little rose liners. So today is June 9th, and as usual, it wouldn't be a Mike Kincaid video if we didn't dump these out and take a look at the roots. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, girls, go ahead and start getting those roots out of there. Might be a little bit tough. Let's get down here. So we'll want to go ahead and grab it from behind, Allie. Grab it from the back and then tip it slightly downward. There you go, and I'll help. You go ahead and just kind of wiggle, wiggle. Oh, there it comes, there it comes. Oh, look at that. Dang, look at that. We do have roots. I couldn't see any coming out from the holes in the bottom, but we do have lots of rose roots in there. Pretty cool, huh? What do you think? It's cool. Yeah. Awesome. Now, we want to show all these roots because we just can't help ourselves. There we go. Oh, a lot easier. Okay, go ahead and turn it off. Let's show these guys. Look at those beautiful, beautiful rooted roses. Those guys are doing awesome, man. That is so cool. There's another one, not quite as much roots, but it's still got a bunch. And it's just ready, raring to go. Isn't that cool? I love that look as that callus builds up and all of those roots just grow and bust out at the seams. Look at that, Richard, those are your roses, man. Fully rooted, seven out of 10, not bad if you ask me. Pretty cool. Thank you for those cuttings, we really appreciate them. All right, so we're gonna pot all of these roses up now. We got them all cleaned up. You see all the roots kind of busting out there at the seams. We're headed into summer, so it's a beautiful time to pot all these up because they're gonna have all summer long to grow massive amounts of roots in those pots, and they'll be well-established and nice little healthy plants going into next winter. 
So I'm gonna answer this question on this video right now because I know I'm gonna get it 100,000 times, but what medium am I using to pop these guys up in? And what medium did I have them in when I was rooting these cuttings? And all I used was fine fir bark. It's just this stuff. It's just the bark on fir trees. And the only reason I use it is because it's a plentiful resource in our area. Because, you know, logging is a huge industry around here and bark is a byproduct. And so a lot of, there are companies that grind this stuff up and then they sell it to local landscape businesses for mulch and things like that. This is just a finely ground fir bark. That's all I use. I get it by the dump truck load at a local landscape supply store. There's no brand. I don't get it by the bag. It would be way too expensive. If you don't have access to stuff like this, you can use anything to root your cuttings that drains well, holds some moisture, and is relatively inert. You don't want to use soil. You don't want to use dirt. It's got too much bacteria and fungus, and it's too tight. It won't drain well. The cuttings will rot. Look at this cutting guys, this is so cool man. So you got all those massive roots all busting out of there and then look at the seams there. They are just busting out at the seams, look at that. More roots wanna grow like crazy around there. Isn't that so cool, both sides. I think that's really neat. Right, so we got them all potted up here. The last thing we do, of course, is put some fertilizer on them. And I've talked about this before. Uh, this is a slow release fertilizer. It's a commercial fertilizer called Apex. That's the brand name. And this is the Cool Weather Special. I've got a video about this fertilizer. I'll put a link in the description down below. You guys can go check that out if you're interested. And then the last thing we do, this is a little pro tip for you. Put a little pre-emergent on there so that we don't get weeds popping up. Stuff works great, doesn't hurt the plants at all, just prevents any weed seeds from germinating. And the last thing we do is water it all in. All right guys, so I think that about concludes this rose propagation video. And I hope that doing this video with these cuttings coming from somewhere else, I, out of state I believe, you know, it just gives you another perspective on rose cuttings because there's so many different ways to do these and I just want you guys to see that this really does work if you just apply the principle. So go out, take your own rose cuttings and start rooting some roses. And finally, thank you, Richard. We really appreciate the rose cuttings, don't we girls? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Richard. This has been a lot of fun and we're gonna try and grow these guys on. With that, we did beat them up a little bit and wash the roots off, of course, but you know, that's for educational purposes, guys. So we'll see how many of them made it through that little onslaught, but we're headed into summer and we're hoping that these guys just take off and flush out with tons of root growth. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to follow along. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios!